Hello, I'm Jessica Manzi, Redwood City's Transportation Manager. In this video, I'm going to walk you through our three updated grade separation alternatives for our southern crossings at Maple, Main, and Chestnut Streets. During this presentation, I'll outline our findings to date and the options we're considering for the three southern at grade crossings. Then I'll review how the alternatives compare to one another and our next steps. Planning for this project has been going on for two years and we've done a lot of technical work and outreach to understand what our options are and what the community's priorities are for grade separations. Highlights of what we've heard from you. There's a very strong support for separating one or more streets from the Caltrain tracks. There's also a willingness to closing one or more streets if people walking and biking can still cross the tracks, for example, through a tunnel under the tracks. And the most important streets to separate are Whipple, Brewster, Broadway, and Maine. Based on these technical constraints and community feedback, the alternatives were narrowed down to what we're currently studying. If you'd like more information on the original alternatives, you can see them in the archived or virtual town hall or on the project webpage. Whipple is the community's highest priority for grade separating, so all of the options we're considering include building a grade separation at Whipple. Another key justification for narrowing down possible alternatives is the planned increase in Caltrain service. From a technical perspective, we know that with a four track station, we would have to build grade separations at Brewster and Broadway. Since the train tracks are already elevated coming from San Carlos, we want them to go over Whipple and they would need to be elevated at Brewster and Broadway. For this reason, we el eliminated the alternative that only grade separates Whipple. When evaluating how buses could operate at the new transit center, it became clear that closing Broadway to vehicles would make bus service much less convenient and less efficient, which led to the elimination of any alternatives that closed Broadway to vehicles. Our options for the Southern crossings are quite different due to existing constraints. First, the tracks have to get back to grade to get underneath Woodside Road. Second, at Maple Street, the street would be closed to vehicles because lowering the street would affect the creek, which is right next to it. Main Street carries the most traffic of the Southern Crossings and was a community priority to keep open. So we're proposing that it be grade separated for all modes, vehicles, bikes, and pedestrians. And then finally at Chestnut Street, we have two options, keeping it open for all modes, which we're calling alternative 1A, or keeping it open for people walking and biking only. And this is alternative 1B. In the next group of slides, I'll walk you through the three remaining alternatives that we're considering. These graphics illustrate options at each of the at-grade crossings. The symbols identify who can cross at each location, people walking, people riding bikes, or people in motorized vehicles. There's also a color and symbol at the grade crossing, which indicates how and whether the crossings, the street is grade separated. Under all of these scenarios, the railroad tracks would be elevated above Whipple, Brewster, and Broadway, and those crossings would be open to all users. When we're considering the Southern crossings, it's important to understand that we have to decide what happens at Maple, Main, and Chestnut all together because they're located so close to one another and because it takes trains a very long time to climb up or go down, all three have to be sep grade separated together or none of them can be grade separated. It's a package deal. These graphics show the two options for separating all of the crossings. Alternative 1A would have Main and Chestnut open for everyone and Maple Street as a bike and pedestrian only crossings. Alternative 1B would have Main open for everyone, while Maple and Chestnut would be bike and pedestrian only crossings. Now I'll walk you through these options at each of the Southern crossings. I'll start with what the pic uh, picture of what the street looks like today, then I'll show you the plans and profile for the design, and then end with some illustrations of what the grade separations could look like when they are built. Please keep in mind that these are high level concepts that will change as the design is developed and we get more input from you and your neighbors. This is what the Maple Street crossing looks like today, looking toward downtown and the bay. At Maple Street, due to the branch of Redwood Creek that crosses the railroad tracks right over here, the street couldn't be lowered and would have to be closed to vehicles. The thumbnail picture in the upper right corner of the plan quickly tells you that in this grade separation, the railroad tracks are elevated above the existing height of the road and the crossing is only open for people walking and biking. 
The profile illustrates the tunnel for people walking and biking will be 10 feet tall and that the floor of the tunnel is at the same height as the road today. It also shows how close the culvert for Redwood Creek is to the proposed tunnel. In the plan view, red X's show where the existing vehicle access would be removed. You can see that Maple Street would be closed to personal vehicles at Franklin and Lathrop on the El Camino side of the tracks and right at the tracks on the downtown side. For the block of Maple between Franklin and the railroad tracks, access would be maintained for emergency vehicles and people walking and biking. To the right of the railroad tracks, the yellow hatching shows additional space that could be needed during construction to build the grade separation. The blue hatching shows space that could be needed by Caltrain to maintain the elevated tracks once they're built. This next group of slides are visualizations of what the grade separations could look like to help everyone understand how the grade separations could integrate into their neighborhood. This and following images show what Maple Street could look like and how it could be used if it were close to vehicles. In this example, Maple could be a community space and plaza area that could be used for things like food trucks. Keep in mind that these are just examples. In future phases, we'll come back to the community for more input on what they would like this space to look like and how it could be used. This is a view closer to the railroad tracks where you can see the tunnel that could connect people walking and riding bikes under the tracks. And this is what it would look like on Maple from the 101 side of the tracks, close to the back of the main library. This is what the railroad crossing at Main Street looks like today when you're looking toward downtown. At the Main Street, we're proposing a hybrid grade separation. The railroad tracks are partially elevated and the road is partially lowered. As mentioned earlier, Main Street was identified by the community as the most important of the three southern crossings to separate for all modes. The thumbnail picture illustrates the proposed hybrid grade separation for all modes at Main Street. The profile shows the elevated tracks in brown, the level of the new sidewalk and separated bikeway on the west side of Main Street in blue, and the level of the lowered Main Street in purple. In the plan view, red X's show where existing vehicle access will be removed. The biggest change is that Elm Street won't connect to Main Street anymore and instead will dead end at Main Street. Cars could also lose access to Pennsylvania during construction. Where the street is purple illustrates where the roadway elevation is different than today. For example, if you're heading toward downtown, the roadway will start lowering at the intersection with Beach Street until it's fully underneath the railroad tracks, and then it will start rising up again until it comes to grade around Cassia Street. Below the railroad tracks, the yellow hatching shows additional space that could be needed during construction to build the grade separation, and the blues the maintenance space once the, uh, the grade separation is built. The rebuilt Main Street would also be wider than it is today to provide room for the tracks support columns, travel lanes, and space for people walking and riding bikes. This could require additional land from adjacent properties to build. Oops. This rendering illustrates what the main street grade separation could look like. The roadway would be lowered by roughly 16 feet and Elm Street would remain at its existing grade, creating a dead end as showed at the left. In this image, you're on the El Camino side of the tracks looking toward downtown. This is the view from the other side of the tracks looking toward El Camino. And this is on the other side of the street still looking toward El Camino. This is what Chestnut Street looks like today, looking toward El Camino. What's different about Chestnut is that the grade separation could be implemented for all modes or just for people walking and biking. At this location, the railroad tracks would be roughly six feet higher than they are today. To accommodate vehicles on a street under the tracks, Chestnut would need to be lowered roughly 15 feet. The following images illustrate what the grade separation options at Chestnut could look like. Again, we're proposing a hybrid grade separation. The railroad tracks are partially elevated and the road is partially lowered. This is alternative 1A. The thumbnail illustrates the proposed hybrid separation for all modes at Chestnut Street. 
The profile shows the elevated tracks in brown, the level of the new sidewalk in blue, and the level of the lower Chestnut Street in purple. In the plan view, again, the red X's show where existing vehicle access would be removed. The biggest changes in this design are that the properties closest to the tracks on the base side of the tracks could lose their access to Chestnut because their road will be a lot lower. Properties along the tracks on the base side could also be impacted by construction and cars could also lose access to Pennsylvania during construction. Where the street is purple illustrates where the elevation of the roadway is different than today. Heading toward the Bay in 101, the straight will, road will start going down at Shasta Street and then we'll get back to the existing grade before Heller. Again, the yellow hatching shows additional space that could be needed during construction. And the blue is space that Caltrain could need to maintain elevated tracks once they're built. The following images illustrate what this grade separation option could look like. This image illustrates how Chestnut could look and function if the, it is grade separated for everyone, including cars. In this image, we're on the El Camino side of the tracks, standing next to the approved Elko Yards project, looking toward the bay and Highway 101. This image is from the other side of the street, still looking towards the bay in 101. And this is alternative 1A from the bay side of the tracks, looking toward El Camino. The building in the background on the right is the outline of Elko Yards that was approved at that site. The see-through gray buildings on this side of the tracks on the left and right would potentially be impacted by the construction of the grade separation project. Houses that are farther away from the track would need changes to their driveways, but would still be accessible from the lowered road. This is a bird's eye view from the 101 side of the tracks. And finally, this is what the undercrossing could look like superimposed on existing buildings. Again, you can see the street going under the railroad road tracks and that there's sidewalks on both sides that are at a higher level, similar to the Great Avenue, Jefferson Avenue grade separation. This is the second alternative for grade separating Chestnut Street. It's still a hybrid grade separation where the railroad tracks are partially elevated, but in this case, only people walking and biking are able to cross in a tunnel under the tracks. And again, this is alternative 1B. The thumbnail in the upper right illustrates the proposed hybrid grade separation for people walking and biking at Chestnut Street. In the plan view, the red X's show where existing vehicle access will be removed. Again, the biggest changes are that Chestnut is close to vehicles at the tracks and the properties along the tracks on the bay side could be impacted by construction. Cars could also lose access to Pennsylvania during construction. After construction is complete, Chestnut could be reconnected with Pennsylvania. As you see in green where the road would be closed after the driveway and then ramps and stairs would give people walking and biking access to the tunnel under the tracks. The yellow hatching shows additional space that could be needed during construction to build the grade separation. And the blue hatching is space that Caltrain could need to maintain the elevated tracks once they're built. And the following images illustrate what this grade separation could look like. Again, this is where the road is closed to vehicles, but people walking and biking can still cross under the tracks. The path in the middle would take you to a tunnel that crosses under the tracks. This image is from the El Camino side near Shasta Street, looking toward the Bay in 101. This is a view from the same side of the tracks, but from the sidewalk level next to the Elko Yards project. This is on the other side of the tracks and shows what the entrance to the tunnel could look like. Here we've shown steps to get you down to the tunnel, and there are ramps off to the left as well for people in wheelchairs, on bikes, or other wheeled devices. As you might guess, the traffic would be pretty different under these two options. <coughs> these maps show what could happen to the traffic with each. The orange lines show where the number of cars would go up and the blue lines show where they would go down. Green lines show where there would be little to no change. The thicker the line, the bigger the number of cars. The map on the left shows what would happen to the traffic if Maine and Chestnut stay open to cars and Maple is closed, alternative 1A. Because Maple is closed, the number of cars on Maple would go down and cars that used to cross the tracks there would most likely go to Main Street instead. And this is where you can see thicker orange lines. Aside from that change, there wouldn't be a big difference. The map on the right shows the traffic if Maple and Chestnut are both closed to cars. 
With both streets closed, there will be more cars shifting to other streets in the neighborhood. Because they're closed, the number of cars on Maple and Chestnut would go down. Cars that used to truck cost the tracks at Maple or Chestnut would go to Main Street and a lot would take Woodside Road too. Getting to Main and Woodside could result in more traffic on Heller and Middlefield. Another option would be to keep Maple, Main, and Chestnut streets as at-grade crossings, similar to the way they look today. In this option, the northern crossings would be grade-separated, allowing for the expanded train station and the grade separation at Whipple, but the southern crossings would not, and this is alternative two. If alternative two were chosen as the preferred alternative, there would still be changes to the crossings. Each of the crossings would get safety improvements, such as having gates at all four corners of the crossing, but you would experience longer delays when train service increases and the tracks would continue to be a barrier for the community. These figures show how we expect the intersections near the crossings to operate under the three scenarios. The letters at each intersection show the modeled level of service in the morning peak hour on the left and the evening peak hour on the right. Level of service ratings range from A, which is free flow conditions with little to no delay, to F, which is heavily congested with significant delays. Alternative two on the left performs relatively well except at the main and chestnut intersection, which has a level of service D in the evening peak. For alternative 1A in the middle, all of the study intersections have a level of service of A or B, suggesting little to no delay. For alternative 1B on the right, closing both Maple and Chestnut to vehicles results in many people rerouting to Main Street. With resulting delays at the Main Street intersections. The Main and Beach intersection becomes very congested and traffic spills back to the Chestnut intersection and increases delays there as well. One point to keep in mind here is that the LOS at study intersections doesn't capture the delays actually at the tracks. As we mentioned earlier, when train service increases, Caltrain has estimated that the gates could be down at the tracks for 18 to 22 minutes per hour which be, would be a significant delay compared to today. In contrast, the delays at the tracks would be eliminated for alternatives 1A and 1B. We've updated all of the information uh, that's available online, both in the virtual room and on the project webpage. This is an image of the virtual room with updated information. As with the last virtual room, you can click on the video wall, boards, news rack, and the aerial map to learn more. There are also a series of videos that explain how to navigate in the virtual room, welcome you and introduce you to the transit district and grade separation project. This slide gives you a high level overview comparing the grade separation options. Comparing the grade separation options to keeping the Southern crossings at grade. On the left, we have the option of keeping them all at grade, which is alternative two. The advantages of this option is that there are no roadway closures. It has the least visual impact the fewest number of property, potential property impacts, and it's the least expensive to build because you're only grade separating three crossings. Disadvantages of this option are that congestion and delays increase, there's continued train horn noise, and the potential conflicts between trains, vehicles, pedestrians, and bikes continue as they are today. On the right, we have the grade separation options for all, cro for all crossings, alternatives 1A and 1B. The advantages of these alternatives are that they reduce delays at the crossings, they reduce the train horn noise, they increase connectivity across the tracks, and they provide the biggest safety increases. Disadvantages of these options are that they require some road closures. They also have the greatest visual impact and they have the greatest number of potential property impacts and are the most expensive to build as we're grade separating all six crossings in Redwood City. If you're interested in more detail about how the alternatives compare to one another, click on this board in the virtual room or review the evaluation matrix on the webpage. This has the full list of evaluation criteria and how each alternative performs. After we complete this round of outreach, we will incorporate the survey feedback into our study recommendations. These findings will be presented to the Transportation Advisory Committee and the study recommendations will be taken to the City Council. We'll continue our work with Caltrain to continue to get funding and start the next phase of work, creating a combined station and grade separation project 
and studying its environmental effects. Thank you for watching, and we look forward to hearing from you.